welcome to my workshop. Today, uh, the video is going to be split up into two halves. Uh, the first half, um, because of requests, I'm going to take a grayscale photograph uh, from the internet, uh, put it into AppCam and show you exactly, um, stage by stage, how I make it into 3D relief. Uh, I've been overwhelmed with requests for that, so I'll show you it. Um, and the next thing then we will we'll, um, cut it on the machine uh, and there again I will take you through stage by stage of how to set the machine up, what tools to use, why I'm using the tools and the speed and feeds. Uh, speed and feeds will be talked about in both uh, videos. Um, I'm splitting it up into two videos because it is just far too much information needed for you to go and replicate what I'm actually doing. So, uh, and, and that is what I uh, in, intend to do. That is uh, the purpose really of these videos so you can replicate exactly what I am doing. Uh, and hopefully make it a lot easier for you. Um, today's material that we're going to end up cutting this in is a very, very special material. Uh, this is Huon Pine. Now to my knowledge it is only grown in Tasmania. Um, southern Tasmania as well, I think. Uh, mainly from the Huon Valley, which I suppose that's where it gets its name from, Huon Pine. Now, um, this is pine, or a pine variety, uh, due to the, I suppose, the needle-like, needle-type leaves that it has, um, but its properties is more like oak. Um, it's very light, but very, very strong. Um, the English... Um, Navy. In actual fact, the, the English Navy, when they found this uh, wood, prized it that much that every tree, as I understand it, in Tasmania, uh, became the property of the Crown. Uh, because they prized it really to build wooden poles. Um, and the reason being is so light, but if you look at the let me see the grain structure there. You'll see it is very, very closely packed together. And this particular tree, uh, the centre of the tree is off here somewhere. Um, so if you sort of counted these, I roughly counted them. Uh, this tree was over 500 years old. Um, at least the part of the tree that I've got. It could have extended further out, I don't know. Um, this particular tree was made into planking uh, more than 50 years ago uh, because the, the gentleman that, who gave me this uh, had it for 40 years uh, of, of his life and he died some years ago uh, after giving me this piece. Um, so I would say the tree was, was, was fallen you know, more than 50 years ago. Um, so anyway, enough talk about Huon Pine. Um, and we will get on with the process now of taking a grayscale picture uh, off the internet and straight into AppCam. Oh, and incidentally, um, this is now leading up towards Christmas, so hence teddies. Because Google has informed me that um, uh, quite a few of my audience, uh, I think 20%, are children. So, poor children. Uh, <laughs> um, and 25% of my viewing audience are female. So, um, actually I thought I'd do something for the girls today as well. Uh, and that's going to be the subject of our 3D relief. So this is what a grayscale relief looks like. So as you can see in Google 
there is a lot and if you search for them um, there's you know a lot of good ones that you can use there's, um, so for this uh, demonstration I have chosen this one as we're we're doing one for the girls today so um, I thought we we chose this one this is straight off the internet this is not modified in any way whatsoever it's just a grayscale picture of a, a girl with a nice hairdo so we're going to take that picture and we're going to put it into at cam so we'll fire up at cam Jewel Smith 9 which I believe was 2007 okay so you just drag and drop straight into at cam uh, now from here you can uh, select the orientation of the program uh, this is the the zero point of the program where you want the the picture to be started now if I grab this piece of material here which is uh, what we're going to actually cut this into uh, at the moment it's set for the center of the material um, but in this case I think what we're going to do is we're going to start off somewhere on one side this bottom corner here so we can alter the orientation now um, and before we go any further I need to measure this piece of wood um, this is 150 by 150 by oh, just under 200 millimeters um, so I want to leave a slight border around the outside so I'm going to have somewhere to, to clamp it because um, the, the tool will travel all the way across uh, though I can probably stop that um, so let's see what we can do here so we're going to leave this dots per inch we're going to leave that at a high value because we want to do um, a very accurate and a very uh, should we say sharp um, carving of this so that actually fits in with with our material size and we we just got enough material there to be able to clamp it down as well um, and now this is the point where we can set the Z zero in other words how far we want that or how deep we want that 3d relief to go down into the material uh, now one word about grayscale now although our eyes can't pick it up there's about 250 we'll say for example shades of gray in that picture in 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 this picture here there's about 250 different shades of gray now the darker the gray the deeper it it uh, is in the picture and so the darkest color has been uh, assigned then the deepest uh, part uh, of the picture so every lighter gray uh, as we get lighter then up this way this is going to show a curve up until we get to the white peaks which is the right in the very forefront of the picture so every different level of gray is allocated a depth in Z then at least that's what the program sees and that's what the program does to be able to convert this into a 3d uh, relief so now what we're going to do is give it a dimension in Z which is here so this is um, 20 ooh, 22 millimeters well we don't go that deep I'll go all the way through so I'm going to go 15 millimeters I know from experience that that's a good number to have actually it's probably a little bit too much so we're going to go probably around about 12 millimeters I think 12 
and we're set for millimeters and we're going to OK that. Right, so now let's go full screen and you'll notice there's two, two uh, screens here, two windows then. Uh, the back window there, that is 3D. And the front window is 2D because sometimes it's better to, it's easier to work in a two-dimensional uh, way rather than a three-dimensional. But with this program, you can actually work either in the two-dimensional, as I'm doing here, um, or the three-dimensional. One thing I'm going to do here is I am going to draw a... I'm going to draw a uh, circle around this outer part here because I only want to machine what is inside here. It cuts down a, a lot of time, uh, you know, sort of other, other... Otherwise, if I didn't, the tool would come all the way over here and it would come here, then go down, machine a bit, come back up and go all the way over to here. So here, here, here and here, you can remove that from... or. or exclude that and you save a lot of time you can save as much as you know three quarters an hour maybe uh, of cutting time depending on how fast you're running the machine so what we are going to do now is we're going to pick a drawing tool and that's in here so you, you'll notice that some of these have little triangle tags so that this means that Behind this, there is uh, many tools that you can use. This is a, a drawing tool, um, or a vector tool. A vector really just means a line or a circle, uh, or a, a you know a any type of line. So this is what we're going to do now. We're going to pick a we we'll pick a circle, then we we'll modify it. So it should snap to the middle. No, it don't. It just snaps to there. So I'm going to pick the middle there, roughly, and draw it out. Then we are going to alter it. Now, we're going to modify that circle now. So this tool is a modifying tool. If I turn that screen more to you, I think that might be a little better. So now we're going to... we've highlighted it now and we've... Um, highlighted this drawing tool, we now can manipulate this uh, and we can manipulate it by several different means. You see I'm stretching it out. There we go. I'm happy with that. In actual fact I can turn that down to see exactly. This slider up here is like a contrast uh, slider. So I can turn the the photograph off or, or dim it all right by moving this slider and I can I can bring it to any level that I want from hundred percent down so I can then see better of where I mean, you see here my circle is slightly out there so I'm going to modify that a bit okay we're happy with that. Now, why I've done that is because I now can choose this and say, I program, I want you to machine everything inside of that, and not on the outside. So I know that I am only going to machine this. I'm not going to be machining that. And so that's what we're going to do next, actually is we're going to have a look at the three-dimensional pro profile of this now and we're going to see in what condition it is okay it's not too bad actually it's not bad but what we're going to do now is we're just going to clean that up a bit uh, you see this pronounced line around here that's the actual line that we just drew so what we're going to do now is we're going to pick this sculpting tool. Actually, before we get the sculpting tool, 
Um, we just come out of that. Let's um, let's do the automatic smoothing. So this is smooth relief, and it's exactly uh, if you guys uh, saw me make the coin uh, three four weeks ago, uh, you will have seen me using this tool. Um, now what this tool actually does is exactly what it shows over the teddy bear here. It just irons out any speckly bits, any any small imperfections. Um, now I've got it on the lowest set in there because I I like to have full control over it. Okay, so each press of this apply button you just see the example of what happens here. So I'm going to press it now. And you can see it smoothed her features out a bit. And I think that's all we need. Okay, to machine it, uh, we just go to the toolpath tab here. Uh, this fetches up uh, quite a, a, a lot of methods of machining and different types of machining um, this is like 2d or two and a half d uh, machining um, and all this section as it says is 3d machining uh, we're actually going to pick this one now then uh, we're going to do an, a standard x raster now so we, that means the x is going to go back and forth like this so it's going to our start position or our orientation of the program is here. So we set the set the set the zero point here. Uh, so when we start the program off in uh, NC Studio, it's going to come along here and it's just going to start cutting here and it's going to work its way all the way through. Um, we're going to do two cuts on this. We're going to do a roughing cut first, uh, then a finishing cut, and actually we might do three cuts on this one. Uh, we might use a very, very, very fine 1.5 millimeter tool uh, and do a finishing cut. Um, and that'll make it really nice and crisp. Okay, so we have the circle uh, here that we drew selected, so that means the 3D image is only going to be cut, it's not going to be, um, the tool won't be cut in here at all in any of the corners. Uh, so we can actually clamp it by the corners uh, with no fear of the tool uh, hitting the clamps. Uh, we're going to use an X raster, which means uh, from the, the orientation of the 3D relief. Uh, it's going to start here. This is our Z0, Z, not Z0, but this is our zero point um, of the program and of the material. In other words, we're going to zero the uh, tool right on this point here for the, the Z, X and Y. Uh, and it's going to start off, it's going to lift up, it's going to come over here, then we're going to zigzag. Now I'll come to that in a minute, but we're going to make the tool zigzag, zigzag rather, into the material, not just go straight in. And then we're going to cut in the X. And we're going to cut this with three different tools. We're going to use a 6mm ball mill, we're going to use a 3mm ball mill, and a 1.5mm ball mill to um, machine this. Um, if it was a large picture, if it was like 300 by 250, I would probably use uh, a 12 millimeter end mill to uh, remove a lot of the um, excess material that we're not going to use. Right, so we'll scroll down and we'll set this up. Now, this is the safe Z height. I'll set it at 13 millimeter, it's fine. Um, home position, actually, I'm going to set that at 5, just cut down a little bit of time and set that at 13. Now we're going to select the tool 
pan we're going to choose a six millimeter ball mill it gives a representation of there what it is select that and now we're going to set up some parameters of speed and feeds um, we're going to use this as a roughing cut so we want to put this put this tool through this piece of material as quickly as possible to remove as much of the material as we can so we're going to have a one millimeter step over so it's going to be quite a coarse aggressive cut um, 1.0 step down um, step down we're going to go we're going to go five millimeter with that uh, feed rate now this is millimeters per second uh, we can afford to take this right up we're going to go to 60 millimeters a second but within uh, NC Studio or Mark 3 we can run that at 10% of that figure if we wish so uh, and which is what I normally do I normally start off at 10% and then when I see everything is running just fine then you can ramp it right up to 100% uh, plunge rate this is the rate or speed that the tool is going to go down in um, uh, we're gonna go 35 millimeters per second um, spindle speed look my spindle is not connected to uh, the program yet still um, but I'll just leave it as the manufacturers or the recommended settings is fine tool number one we're going to leave that tool number one do multiple passes in Z yes Z height the first pass we're going to go two ramp angle or ramp moves I'm going to set I'm going to accept the um, Actually, we're going to change up to 10 and this one to 10 uh, start height I'm going to set that one at 10 so that means the tool is going to move 10 millimeters this way 10 millimeters that way and it's going to start doing it 10 millimeters over the work uh, and it's going to be and it's going to go at an angle of 10 degrees roughly speaking now we're going to set the work up yep this is all set correctly the zero position of the material is at the top of the top of the material and the model position is in the top of the material in other words we're using the top section of this uh, piece of material and so that's all okay and there it is and that's the model position in the material just like that and we're going to just name this now I just abbreviate everything so it's uh, it's just um, cut one it's the first cut and it's a six millimeter B B mill that's good enough as long as you understand what it is that's all you need and calculate now there we go so if we bring it up here we can actually see what is going on and you will notice that it's machining the whole relief in other words out here because I didn't do a magic thing and that was select so select the selected vector now we'll see what difference that makes okay so you can see it doesn't do a too bad a representation and if it's a larger piece I would I would leave it with that but uh, this is quite a small piece and I want a nice crisp really crisp picture so what we're going to do is um, 
we're going to now put the uh, 1.5 millimeter ball mill in. Okay, now my 1.5 millimeter millimeter ball mills won't actually reach down 12 millimeter. Uh, and if I put it straight into this and cut with the 12 millimeter, it would probably snap off uh, on one of these ridges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a vector, um, <clears throat> which is just, um, you know, you pull this fly out box and choose this continuous line. Uh, and I'm going to draw around this um, main relief and um, ask it to machine inside of that line. So there we have a vector that uh, runs around our main 3D image there. So we want to machine everything inside of that just to prevent our tool being snapped off on this ledge that we know is is 12 millimeter uh, in, in step down. Leave everything the same. Select a tool which is 1.5 ball mill. Select it. Now then, sp speed and feeds. Um, I'm going to leave that as it is. This is machined in wood. In copper, I would um, I would probably go uh, 0 0.01 there, uh, copper or brass. But in this case, um, this is just fine. Except that I'm going to leave that as it is. Feed rate, I'm going to put to, let me see, 20. I'll make that 25 actually. And this one we're going to go to 12. Uh, now then, RPM 24,000. Uh, this is tool number three. So, at cam actually prompts you a lot. If you're doing something not quite right or something stupid, like I just did, um, so you know, just disconnect the, the ramps because it's, there's not enough material to ramp down into. Calculate now. And it's happy to do that. So it will prompt you uh, if you're doing something daft. <laughs> so that's one good thing about uh, the ATCAM programs. Okay, so we'll close that and simulate that. So we've got a 3D. Oh, it's already done it. And that's a very good representation. Nice and crisp. Okay, so we're going to select the uh, cut one. We're just going to press, we make sure that we've got G code, millimeters, save. It's picked up my storage uh, device in my E drive. I'm just going to say uh, cut one, one, and it's a six millimeter. Ah, actually, the there and save and it's done so I hope you've uh, enjoyed uh, and understand a little bit uh, better of how um, a grayscale image straight off the internet uh, can be put into a CAD CAM program and made into a relief and manipulated and you know, the um, tool pass all drawn up and uh, now I've got it on my storage device and we'll put it in the machine and we'll cut it but that'll be for the next video um, so I hope you've uh, liked uh, this video please um, press like and subscribe to my channel that's a really good thing to do and um, if you press on the little red box down in that bottom corner, uh, that will take you to my YouTube channel where there's now over 150 videos uh, ranging from um, demonstrations of AdCam, Mac 3, NC Studio, 
um, CNC um, writer work, uh, different shop jobs I do around here, uh, making a bit of furniture and different other things. And uh, I do quite a, quite a lot of wood, uh, wood turn in as well on the lathe. Uh, you seem to like that. And uh, I shall be doing a little bit more of that too in the coming weeks. So, um, from me now and Teddy's, um, I think it's bye for now. Until next time. So yes, this is uh, going to be one for the one for the, the girls there, and uh, you can see it's a, a nice uh, representation. That, Come on, Teddy. Ho, ho, ho. No, stay there, Teddy.